Good afternoon, dear colleagues, if you are in Europe. Good morning, if you are in North or South America. And good evening, if you are listening from Asia. Thank you all for joining this webinar. Uh, for your information, there is the possibility of typing in questions. You should have a Q&A bar at the bottom, right where you will be able to type in your questions. But the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar in the Q&A session. This um, material is also being recorded for access after the webinar at any time. So this is a very exciting time, and it's an exciting topic because we have a fantastic new device that we are going to be discussing during this webinar. And I will be sharing with you as being the first doctor in Europe having experience with the Vivian Prima, my experience so far. A bit of introduction with regards to the vascular lasers and the device that we were going to be talking about. These are the wavelengths that uh, we generally tend to use for vascular purposes. One of the common ones is the 532 KTP. The 595 the PDL is the gold standard vascular laser that is currently used, as well as some devices that have a diode and, of course, the NDR that we will also be discussing. The choice of the wavelength in vascular laser is important. And whilst there are certain peaks for the hemoglobin in terms of absorption for vascular purposes, one of the key things is to ensure that the wavelength is not too short, whereby the depth of penetration is a limitation, and too much of that light will be absorbed uh, on the surface, which is the epidermis, potentially creating problems at epidermal level. On the other hand, if the wavelength is too long, then there is less absorption by hemoglobin, and therefore to compensate, higher energy uh, is needed. And this is the reason why the wavelength 595 nanometer, which is used in pulse dilator, is an ideal wavelength, because it is not short in terms of uh, too much absorption at the epidermis, and not long enough in terms of lack of absorption by oxyhemoglobin. So it sits nicely between the short and the long wavelength where there is adequate penetration to most of the vessels um, and the skin with less uh, risk in terms of epidermal um, overheating and less wastage of that energy. This diagram really illustrates that one of the key principles that with the visible light and the, and the near infrared wavelengths, that as the wavelength increases, the depth of penetration increases. And one of the key things here that you will see, the reason why the pulse dye laser at 595 nanometer functions better than the KTP at the wavelength of 532 is because it has a longer wavelength, and that allows for deeper penetration and less absorption by the epidermis, and therefore there is less risk of overheating the epidermis with potential epidermal problems. So for the same spot size, if one to um, compare the 595 nanometer wavelength with the 532, there's superiority in terms of depth of penetration with the 595 and increased efficacy and safety compared to 532. On the other hand, for very deeper vessels where the depth of penetration is of importance, the ND YAG wavelength of 1064, 1064 nanometer will be more appropriate because of that depth of penetration that we get because it's a longer wavelength. And really, Candela as a company prides itself in uh, leadership when it comes to science and the application of the science and the physics in clinical practice. Ever since the inception of the um, photothermolysis theory in 1983 by Anderson and Parrish, uh, the first vascular laser, the first pulse dye laser was invented. And at its time, it was invented for capillary malformation. And what you can see here from this slide is the evolution 
of the pulse dye laser over the years uh, with different wavelengths, starting initially from 577 nanometer and 1996. The choice of four wavelengths was, uh, was studied, and it was chosen that the 595 was the best wavelength in terms of adequate depth of penetration with good uniform uh, coagulation and heating of the vessels with less risk of the epidermis. And that's why since then, with the V-Beam Classic moving forward in 2000, the choice of the wavelength 595 nanometer was chosen. Most of us who are dealing with vascular lasers uh, should be familiar with the V-Beam Perfector, which is an absolutely outstanding laser in, in vascular use, which is a 595 nanometer. But we are very pleased to announce the arrival of the new V-Beam, which is the V-Beam Prima. This is the V-Beam Perfector, which is the present and past which has multiple indications beyond primary vascular conditions. Uh, and you can see different spot sizes. And one of the unique things for the uh, V-beam is the linear electrical spot size, which is the 3 by 10 millimeter spots, which you can trace the individual linear telangiectasias and vessel, and also the tunable pulse widths, whereby you can choose very short all the way up to longer pulse duration depending whether you would want purpura or coagulation matching the vessel diameter. So what is different then, since we have the V-beam perfecter? Well, so now moving on to the V-beam prima. One of the first differences between the prima and the perfecter is the addition of the 1064 nanometer and the YAG wafer. So we are dealing in the V-beam prima with two wavelengths, the 595 nanometer pulse dye and the 1064 nanometer NDI, which, as I explained earlier in one of the slides, that the longer the wavelength, the deeper the penetration. And in this case, this means that it, within one platform, you will be able to treat all vascular conditions in terms of depth, where if you have a deeper component of the vessel, such as the venous blood, the leg veins, here then you'll be able to choose the 1064 nanometer wavelength, which will penetrate deep. And for most of the other more superficial vessels, you can choose the 595. So within the same pathology, within the, in the same patient, within the same treatment, some areas might require the 595 nanometer wavelength, whereas some other areas may require the 1064 nanometer. And this is a huge advantage and addition, and the addition of the 1064 nanometer allows for this customization of treatment based on the depth. One of the other very exciting um, additions on the, the V-Beam Prima is the two methods of cooling. Now, Candela as a company prides itself to this patent of DCD, which stands for Dynamic Cooling Device, which is the spraying of tetrafluoroethane spray that is a cryogen spray that selectively and spatially cools the epidermis without the risk of vasoconstriction into the papillary dermis, the vessels that are found in the papillary dermis. And you will be able to dial in the amount of cryogen spraying and the time between the spraying um, depending on the pathology and the skin type and the fluids that you're using. Most of us who are uh, familiar with Candela devices are extremely happy with the DCD, which has superiority over um, uh, other methods of cooling. Now, the other advantage is the contact cooling, which is the ever cool. And this is particularly useful when there is brown targets or dyschromias where uh, the energy is required also to be absorbed at epidermal level. And from my experience, also, this is particularly useful for patients who are extremely sensitive and find the spraying with the DCD somewhat sensitive to them. 
uh, with the use of the applying gel under contact cooling that decreases the sensitivity and increases patient's comfort. You will see from the slide that you are able to dial in the degree of temperature that is required with the Evercool from very cold to somewhat less cold, so 10 degrees, 15 degrees, or 20 degrees. And that will depend on the skin type, that will depend on the degree of chromophore, depends on the fluids that are used. So now within the same machine, you have two wavelengths, depending on the depth and your target of the vascular. And you also have two methods of cooling. Now you may want to say that you're very familiar with the DCD and want to continue with the DCD, which is absolutely fine. But for those clinicians who are more used to contact cooling and prefer the contact cooling, then that choice is there. In my practice, personally, I am using both the DCD and the contact cooling, and I rely on the contact cooling for very sensitive patients, or where I'm also treating uh, a mixture of uh, vascular and dyschromia, such as in conditions of coiculid uh, and so that. One of the other advantages of the contact cooling is when you would like to apply gentle compression, such as, for example, in a venous lake, the contact cooling ever cool handpiece is particularly useful because in addition to ha having the cooling, I'm able to just gently compress and reduce the overall target for the initial shot. So, so far, two key things about the VB Prima, the dual wavelength of 595 and 1064, and two methods of cooling, the DCD, which is a patented method of cooling of Candela, and the Evercool contact cooling. One of the other very important things is the dye, the rhodamine dye that is used in the uh, pulse dilator 595 component of the v -beam Prima, which is more efficient, lasts longer, and more importantly, you will be able to track the amount of dye that is left. So on the screen, you are able to see that there is this tracking system whereby you'll be able to track exactly how much dye that is left, which will allow you to anticipate for um, further dye. And that is a, a very unique thing in terms of um, the, the use of the dye and the efficient use of dye. The pulse dilator in Candela has a unique micropulse technology, which means that the individual pulse is divided into small, short micropulses, which is particularly good when it's used in the subperperic modes, for example, for rosaceous and poikilodermas and scars and some other conditions whereby you would want to have a subperperic response and mode. Within the same pulse, the energy is divided into micropulses, which, al which allow for greater safety and uh, that subperperic threshold. And this is in the V-beam Perfecta as well as in the V-beam Prima. One other um, addition in the Prima compared to the Perfecta is the increased spot size. We have up to we have now 15 millimeter spot. And this diagram shows that if you change from a 10 to a 15 millimeter spot, you are increasing the area by 125%. What does this mean in clinical practice? In clinical practice, this means speed, whereby the coverage area will be able to uh, cover much faster. But also, in addition to that, it's the depth of penetration. This slide shows an important phenomenon in laser physics, and that is with a small spot size, there's less depth of penetration and there is more wastage and scattering of the light. Whereas for the same fluid, the large spot size, the depth of penetration is deeper and there is less wastage and scattering. So as you can see, for the same fluid, by simply changing the spot size on the large spot size, you are going to have more effect. 
In practice, that means for a large spot size, we can use lower fluences, be more gentle on the surface, the epidermis, and reach deeper targets. So the way to look at it is, for example, we're treating a port wine stain or rosacea by simply maximizing the spot size. And using a 15 millimeter spot, we require less amount of fluids, which will mean less heating of the epidermis, that is increased efficacy and safety and protection of the epidermis, but also deeper penetration of the lights, and therefore we are able to treat the deeper component first, and as we progress further with the treatment, we are able to then decrease the spot size and potentially treat uh, the more superficial component. This is something that we are able to do by simply having a large spot size of 15 millimeters. So there are two advantages of the large spot size, and that is speed and coverage, which means that fewer shots are required to treat a large area, but also at more depth of penetration with lower fluences required for that larger spot size and therefore increased safety and with regards to the epidermis. This table shows one other additional feature with the VB Prima, which is increased energy. So as you can see with the V-beam perfecter, the maximum largest spot size is 12 millimeter, whereas with the V-beam prima, that's 15 millimeter. But the amount of energy that you can use is higher, which is up to 12 G. So we have a larger spot size, but not at the cost of lower fluids. We have a larger spot size plus higher energy whereby, if needed and required, we can use higher fluences too. And for those of you who are familiar with the V-Beam Perfector, this table once again illustrates some of the key differences between the V-Beam Perfector and the new V-Beam, the V-Beam Prima. So we still have the 595, but with the V-Beam Prima, we have the addition of the 1064. We have a large spot size of 15 millimeter. We have higher energy and maximum fluence of 12 joule. We have more efficient dye that we are able to track. And we have two methods of cooling, the existing DCD in the leaving perfecter, as well as the ever cool, which is the term used for contact cool. One of the other advantages is the zoom hand feed that, you, that allows you to change the spot size with increments of half a millimeter. So with the V-Beam Perfector currently you have a five millimeter spot, for example, and you have a seven millimeter and a 10 millimeter, but you cannot choose eight millimeter or four millimeter. With the V-Beam Prima, you are able to choose a three, 3.5, 4, 6.5, 8, 8.5 millimeter, and you are able to adjust the spot size with your handpiece in increments of half a millimeter, which means that particularly for smaller targets and for vessels, you are able to dial in exactly the spot size that is required. I just want to highlight, in this slide, I want to highlight one feature if you will look at the 1064 and the YAG laser, two things I would like to highlight here. One is the frequency up to 10 hertz, which is speed. And the other feature is the difference in pulse duration in 1064, where you can go up to 60 milliseconds, but more importantly, you can go in sub millisecond mode in the microsecond mode. And those of you who are familiar with certain techniques, whereby you use a large spot size at high frequency in a sub-millisecond mode in the NDI in multi-passes, so-called painting technique for heating the skin or rejuvenation, this, is, this will allow you to do exactly the same with the V-Beam Prima. So with the V-Beam Prima, you can use the 1064 NDI in the long pulse modes, 
but you can also use it with the high frequency, higher hertz in the sub-millisecond or so-called microsecond mode in a painting technique for some applications such as acne, rosacea, diffuse redness, flat scarring, rejuvenation, or tightening in combination with other treatments. This is often something that is not often discussed or talked about, but nevertheless is a great advantage of having this short pulse duration and higher frequencies, the NDAG and the VD Prima. So some of the other features, as I already explained, the zoom handpiece that you can incrementally increase by half a millimeter spot size, but there is also a remote Wi-Fi connectivity whereby you'll be able to, whereby the engineers will be able to uh, have access uh, to the system and a very good, useful guided user interface where I have reviewed all the settings and they are extremely helpful and it's a step up from the current applications user guide interface that is in DB Perfector with newer um, indications such as, for example, uh, post filler bruising whereby the settings will be given to. Calibration is another feature whereby there is only a single use of calibration, which means once you uh, switch on the V-Beam Prima, then you just need to calibrate it once. And if you're changing spot size or you're changing pulse duration or fluence, you do not need to recalibrate again. Um, this is currently the case with the V-Beam Perfector, but with the V-Beam Prima, there is only one single calibration regardless of changing spot size, fluence, or pulse duration. So what can we use the VB and Prima for in clinical practice? Well, this diagram illustrates essentially in terms of the colors, that everything that is red in terms of the vascularity, such as port wine stains, rosacea, um, telangiectasias, acne vulgaris. You are able to uh, treat dyschromia, and benign pigmented lesion using the contact uh, cooling handpiece. But also now we have the addition of the NDI 1064. We are able to then treat uh, venous blood, which is rich in deoxyhemoglobin, which particularly absorbs 1064 well. But also, as I explained earlier, because of the longer wavelength, there is deeper uh, penetration and some other non-primary vascular conditions that can be treated with the phosphide laser. This is the way I always like to explain it, that the pulse dye laser in clinical practice can be used in so-called primary vascular conditions and non-primary vascular conditions or conditions with a vascular component, um, but they are not primarily vascular, and by treating that vascular component, you can get improvements. Examples of these are warts of the rucas, stretch marks, 3A rubra, scars in terms of scar prevention, as well as active scar management, inflammatory acne vulgaris, nail psoriasis. These are all non-primary vascular conditions which can certainly be treated very well with a pulse dilator, and there are numerous articles to back this up. So once again, this is just a selection of some of the conditions that can be treated with the VB and Prima, where all of these conditions have studies to back this up. I would like to spend a minute discussing about the NDAG because this is often um, a wavelength that doesn't get the same amount of attention as the pulse dilator in vascular users. But the long pulse NDAG can certainly be used for the deeper vascular components, as I explained, because of the longer wavelength and therefore deeper penetration, but particularly useful for venous blood, and that is because venous blood is rich in deoxyhemoglobin, which absorbs the 1064 wavelength very well. But there are certainly other applications, such as acne vulgaris, diffuse redness, or rosacea, warts, verrucas, tightening, rejuvenation, and scars, where studies have been published using the 1064 long pulse NDDAG or in the microsecond pulse. 
These are some of the clinical images from um, our colleagues in the United States who use the, the VB Prima. And here you will see that the ever cool contact cooling handpiece was used. And that is because there is also surface dyschromia. So where there is brown and red, the contact cooling will be more superior compared to the DCD. And these are the parameters uh, that are used. You will see that the pulse duration that was used is long. And that is to avoid a purpuric response, response in the blood vessels. Some other very impressive results in terms of treatments of telangiectasias on the face. And again, with the condition of rosacea. Rosacea again, one of my colleagues in the US. And this one but with very clear improvements with the telangiectatic and erythematous components. In this case, using the largest spot size, the 15 millimeter spot size of the uh, pulse dye laser, which led to the first publication that is published in lasers and surgery and medicine using the novel 15 millimeter spot size, the pulse dye laser in the management of rosacea. And you are able to get a copy of this article um, from your um, Camdena contact. So to summarize, what are the key unique features of the VB Prima? We have two wavelengths, the 595 and the 1064, the latter for the deeper components of vessels and the venous. We have two choices of cooling, the contact cooling as well as Cryogen cooling, DCD. We have more efficient dye with longer dye life that we are able to monitor and track. Faster speeds. We have more energy with a larger spot size of 15 millimeter and higher frequency. This is my approach to vascular treatment in terms of choosing the setting. That first you will determine the wavelength. So as I explained, for most of the vascular conditions on the face. The 595 will uh, be adequate for venous blood or for deeper pathology than the 1064 is, is chosen. You then choose your spot size for linear vessels. The linear electrical spot size, the 3 by 10 millimeters, is ideal. If your uh, target is deep, then choose a large spot size. If it's a very small superficial target, then you can choose a smaller spot size. Then you will determine the pulse width. And that is either if you want purple, and then you will go for short pulse duration with a pulse dye laser, or if you're looking for vessel coagulation, then your pulse duration will have to match the diameter of the blood vessel. Then you will choose the fluence, because the fluence will depend on the chosen spot size and the pulse duration. And lastly, you are going to have to adjust the cooling, which essentially means that if you're using very high fluences, when the cooling was going to have to be increased. And alternatively, when the um, fluence is lower and in a lighter skin type, overcooling might potentially compromise the result. So I have had the honor of having the first VB in Prima outside the United States. And I'm very pleased to say that the United Kingdom is the first country in Europe to have the VB in Prima. And, uh, my experience has been uh, extremely satisfactory. I'm very, very pleased and impressed with this fantastic machine. Here you can see this is a hemangioma, and therefore you'll be using a large spot size. This would limit the number of treatments uh, that is required with a 15 millimeter spot. This was after one single session where there's a combination of the linear electrical spot size to trace the individual vessels, and then a large 15 millimeter spot size to treat the uh, entire face. And the patient was extremely happy after one treatment session. Venous lakes like these can be safely treated with the V-beam Prima. And the, in this case, it will be the 1064 wavelength for this venous blood. And the advantage here is that you can use the contact cooling whereby you can apply gentle compression initially to uh, reduce the amount of target and heat up the venous lake. 
And as I say, this um, indication of bruising, whether it's traumatic or post-injections, is also in the guide interface, and you can hear clearly, very impressively, see after 24 hours, you can actually see the rings of the spot size and in 72 hours, it's completely clear. Using a large spot size in this part of the body will allow for better depth of penetration. Periorbital veins, which will be uh, treated with a 1064 nanometer, and here is why the handpiece, whereby you can incrementally adjust and increase the spot size by half a millimeter spot, is incredibly important because in some parts you may want to use a four millimeter spot, and in other parts you may want to use a smaller spot size of three millimeter spots, and you are able to exactly match that and do that with the Vivian Prima with the um, handpiece that can be incrementally increased and adjusted by half a millimeter spot size. Scars that are hypertrophic or keloidal because of the depth of penetration and you want to get deep, this is where a large spot size of the 595 can work very well and therefore uh, and thereafter once the scars are flatter then you can use um, somewhat smaller spot size but the large spot size in this case will allow for good depth of penetration and often here there will be a combination of approaches but the vivian prima will work wonders in this case this is one single treatment of port wine stain using the 15 millimeter spot size and the contact cooling the patients called me afterwards and said he was very happy and very impressed with the results um, and um, you can see very nicely that there has been very good reduction after one single um, treatment. So what has been my personal experience using the first V-Beam Prima in Europe? Um, it is a great machine with having the versatility of the addition of adding that 1064 nanometer. Um, I am now able to, in one platform, treat uh, deeper vessels. The 15 millimeter spot size is great, and I'm using it for poikiloderma, for civet, for rosaceous, for port wine thing, hypertrophic scars. The contact cooling handpiece is particularly useful when there is dyschromia and for patients with sensitive skin. The once daily calibration makes things much easier. And I would summarize by saying the VB Prima is a perfect, complete vascular platform to treat all vascular conditions. This is my last slide. And once again, we'll go through the key features of the VB Prima, and that is having two wavelengths, 595 and the 1064, with two methods of cooling, the DCD cryogen spray, as well as the contact cooling, a larger spot size of 15 millimeter spot with higher fluence, with smarter use of the dye and a tracker of monitoring the dye, a more convenient once daily calibration, as well as a very good updated guided user interface. So I would like to thank you all for listening and joining the webinar. And we now have time for questions and answers. there are any questions, they can be typed. So one question is about the combination of 595 and 1064 in a single patient. Now that, depend, that depends on the condition that is being treated. So for example, for the hypertrophic port wine stain, where there, are, there is a nodular component or the so-called blebs of the port wine stain. These blebs can be treated with the uh, long pulse and DIAG, um, targeted treatments, so tracing, chasing the individual blebs of the port wine stain with a 1064 NDIAG. And then after for the remainder 
components of the um, port wine stain using the pulse dilator with the 13 millimeter spot size. There is also a relatively recent publication published in the Journal of European Academy of Dermatology and Venerology using the combination of the Vivian Perfecta 595 and the Gentle YAG from Candela, the MD YAG, and the pulse dilator in hemangiomas, where the thicker components of the hemangioma was treated with the 1064 and the more flat components with the 595 that uh, was published, and therefore certainly uh, the combination can be used. Um, so in one single patient, there might be a deeper component that you can treat with the 1064 and a more superficial component that you can treat with the 595. Another question, if you would always use the 50 millimeter spot size and rosacea. Yes, well, it's, so as I said, the larger spot size, the 15 millimeter spot size allows for speed. This particularly would be useful off the face if you have, for example, a large uh, birthmark or port wine stain on the arm or um, on, on the leg, and using a large spot size uh, will be a faster coverage. But one of the things, and as you saw in the publication that was published in later in surgery and medicine, that using a larger spot size will allow you to have more homogeneous, deeper uh, penetration, whereby we are targeting also uh, more homogeneously deeper components of the vessel. So yes, for rosacea, poikiloderma, um, I tend to, on port, on port wine stain, tend to start with uh, larger spot sites, so the 15 millimeter spots, and then afterwards, depending on the chromophore and the target and the depth, thereafter it might um, move to a smaller spot sites, such as 10 millimeter. But yes, I start with the 15 millimeter. There are some questions are duplicates, but there is a question about contact cooling and when to use contact cooling. Okay, now so. Um, there are doctors who are used to devices with contact cooling, and they, are, they feel very comfortable using that method of cooling. And if that is the case, then you can, of course, use the contact cooling for um, all, all the indications with the VV and Prima. There are doctors who are also uh, very used to uh, DCD cryogen dynamic cooling device, and therefore they um, can simply just continue using the DCD. But from my personal experience, using now the VBM Prima with the two different cooling methods, I prefer to use the contact cooling in patients who are very sensitive, have very sensitive skin, and particularly do not like that spraying uh, required in the pulsation. And they find with the contact cooling, as there is also um, a, a gel that is applied for the gliding gel, that that is more comfortable. So for the patient's comfort, I tend to uh, use that. I also prefer to use the contact cooling when I'm treating uh, dyschromia and a brown component. And I also like to use the contact cooling also in a way where I treat with some compression, for example, with a spider angioma or a venous lake, where I would like to have that compression element, and I can use that using the contact cooling. Once again, with the contact cooling, you are able to adjust the degree of cooling that you would want. So you, you are able to choose the degree of temperature and cooling that you would want the epidermis to be cool. Particularly useful when you're using the MDAG at higher fluences, then the contact cooling uh, will allow you also, for example, to have perhaps some slightly longer contact afterwards to be able to cool the skin afterwards for a little longer. Um, there are some questions about uh, setting. In terms, of, uh, in terms of the setting, there is the, the interface of the guided user mode um, is available in the VB female with both the 595 as well as the 1064. So for both the pulse dye, as well as the MDAG, there is an interface guided use where you can, there's a drop down menu, you can choose 
for different applications and it gives you the, the setting that is used. And I have uh, checked this and I'm very impressed with the settings as well as an expanded uh, application setting from the VB Perfector, such as, for example, for the scroll mirrors and the case of post to post injection uh, bruising. So the settings are there um, and they are available uh, in the, in the guide, guided mode. Some repetition questions on the contact cooling and on the large spot size, the dial. The die is the same, so it is the same as what I mean die, but it is uh, more efficient compared to the VB Perfector in terms of life, uh, lifelong. So it's li the, the die life is longer, and you are able to track how much die there is left with a monitor tracking system. Um, can you switch from DCD to contact cooling? So there are two different fibers, and yes, you can, but there is a fiber um, handpiece for the DCD, for the dynamic cooling device, and there is a separate fiber that is for the contact cooling. So you, can, you are able to change between the DCD and contact cooling, but you are, you are going to have to change the fibers. But for the spot size, as I explained, you can just change that um, with, in, in the handpiece. So you can just literally, uh, with your finger, just dial in and incrementally increase or decrease the spot size by half a millimeter. And this is something that I am routinely doing with, um, with vessels and, and areas whereby some areas might use a, a larger spot size and for the more smaller areas, might just adjust and use a smaller uh, spot size. So you are able to dial this in um, with, the, with with great ease. So really, uh, and most of the other questions are a repetition of uh, the questions that have already been uh, been, been asked. But um, yeah, the VB Prima is a great vascular uh, device. It's a complete vascular device. And in my opinion, this is the greatest vascular device that currently exists in the market, which um, allows you to treat all vascular indications with all different settings. Now, uh, with this, I conclude the webinar, and I would like to thank you all for joining us and listening to this webinar. Uh, once again, this webinar is recorded and will be available for access at any time. And I'd like to thank you once again and have a good day.